John Alicantosol. He's the best bass player in rock and roll ever, no contest. Thunderfingers. With a colossal speed of fingers like this. His manner was unique in every way. The main thing is to stay true to your own style. John Alicantosol, the bass player of the millennium, the most unique and distinctive bass guitarist of all times. He's the best bass player in rock and roll, ever, no contest. Yes, I use word bass guitarist, not bassist, because he used his bass as guitar pitched down one an octave. Bass player. Well, that's a bass guitarist. By the way, he started out as a guitarist, but switched to the bass as a result. When he started playing with Pete Townsend, he switched to the guitar because Pete apparently has taken the role of guitarist. John himself used to say that he would like to be remembered as a person who helped to change the face of bass guitar. And you know what? It's true. It was already true even in the beginning of his career in The Who. From the very first years, he had a completely inimitable sound. Anyone who picked up the bass was influenced by John Entwistle one way or another. Entwistle made his first bass at the age of 14 or 15, I believe. He did, he did it himself. Roger Dolphy was a great older, huge vocalist of The Who. He caught his attention as a musician and invited him to play in his rock band called Detours. The band was founded in 1959. As John joined the Detours, he wants to Pete join them too, mentioning his undoubted talent and encouraging. This was in 1961. Very soon they changed the name to The Who, and later the drummer Keith Moon joins them, and the rest is history. The group released their first album in 1965, uh, it was called My Generation, obviously. And of course, let's match the legendary bass solo in song My Generation. It was, I think, the first bass solo in rock music ever. Interestingly, he used tape while string on that bass. And by the way, John was the only member of the who had at least some uh, music education. The sound of John Anderson was very loud on stage and caused Roger to always ask him to turn him down a little bit because he couldn't hear himself singing on the stage. And he never, ever, 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 on any show that I've ever done with John, under any circumstances, has ever been difficult to hear. John was also known for having two bass outputs on his bass, and he used to send the signal of each separate pickup to different amps. He used to mix the clean sound with overdriven sound. John's early passion for jazz gave rise for improvisation that he used to use in many ways in studio recordings and on the stage as well. His manner was unique in every way. He liked to dress very brightly, explaining this by the fact that he was most emotionless and modest on the stage. He used to code attention somehow. But what made John very unique it was his recognizable sound. The main thing is to stay true to your own style. The first and quite obvious thing to achieve that kind of sound, you have to crank up the treble to the top as much as it's possible. Full treble, full volume. But like all good musicians, he formed his sound not from the scratch, but because the song required that kind of sound. One of his trademarks was his totally new technique he called typewriter, when he tapped the strings against a fretboard like this. <laughs> I played a bass like a, like a guitar. Kind of like a typewrite movement. Taking the stage with the Who, playing Lock Moon is unrealistically energetic, feels overloaded with Pete's wall beating chords. He shaped a sound that immediately defined the character of the Who. It was a very unusual approach to bass, so if we can call it bass. <laughs> In one interview, John said that The Who didn't have a bass guitar at all. As the years went on, the band recorded album after album, and at the same time, John developed and refined his technique and sound. John got attention because he simply stood so still. His finger flying like a stenographer, the notes and machine gun chatter brought Pete Townsend in Who I Am. And through it all, as of his no anchor, the experience John stood like an oak tree in the middle of the tornado. With a colossal speed of fingers moving all around the neck, he received a nickname called Thunderfingers. <laughs> it's 
Speaking of fingers, you know, before uh, playing the bass, uh, John used to play on the brass instruments, maybe. Oh, it maybe it came from this. In The Who, John not only played bass, he also sang and wrote the songs. He wrote about 20% of The Who's song. After the breakup, the first but not last, he began a solo career, which by the way was not that uh, commercially successful as The Who. His playing was definitely an absolutely unique phenomenon, and even now in 2023 there's not a lot of people who can reproduce his technique. His career was huge in The Who, his solo career, and the side project still is traded to death in 2002, I believe, due to heart attack caused by drug overdose. I won't go to the details of history any further because you can easily find them in, in other videos on YouTube and wherever else, or Wikipedia, in articles and much more. I just want to say that John was a great guy who managed to really change the face of bass guitar, change the way that people look at the bass guitar. And that's the most important thing about Joe's approach. Thanks for watching, hit like or subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you'll be notified about new videos automatically. Subscribe to my Instagram and... Uh, the other links I will put down in the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.